The first lesson is found in the book of Psalms, 133, beginning with verse 1. How good and pleasant it is when God's people are together in unity. It is like pre precious oil poured on the head, running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, down on the collar of his robe. It is, it is as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion. For there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life evermore. Please join me. How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. The word of the Lord. The second lesson is found in the book of Mark, chapter 12, beginning with verse 28. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Noting that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked them, he asked him, of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this, hear, O Israel, the, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second one is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Well, well said, teacher, the man replied. You are right in saying that God is one and there is no other but him. To love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. The word of the Lord. The third lesson is found in the book of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 16 through 20. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When, he saw, when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. The word of the Lord. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. Uh, this gospel reading is found in the book of John, chapter 21, beginning with verse 15. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you're old, you'll stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. Then he said to him, follow me. Gospel of the Lord. And please be seated and let's pray. Lord, Heavenly Father, thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit, for the love of Jesus, Lord, for your calling upon this church, Lord, for the vision that you have for this church, your purpose for this church. Today, just give us uh, ears to hear, hearts that are open, and Lord, uh, minds that are full of the wisdom of God as we just explore your word and your plans for us. In Jesus' name, amen. So I, I got to talk about the psalm a little bit first. This is a really cool psalm. And that first verse is very uh, important to me personally. But um, I, I just wanted to give you a little background on the psalm uh, because it is a little weird. So this is, this is a song that King David wrote. Uh, he was 
at least 30 when he wrote it, and it's, it's, it's very connected. If, I, if you make mental note of this or write it down, you're going to look it up later. 2 Samuel chapter 5. And you get why, why it's connected to 2 Samuel 5 is because that is where finally, after many, many, many years of civil war, war between, between uh, King Saul and King David, a separation of the kingdom, um, that, that all of Israel came together. And the 12 tribes, the leaders of all the 12 tribes came to King David and they pledged their allegiance to him. And uh, so the, the kingdom was finally unified. And so um, David moved the capital where he'd been ruling from, from Hebron, back to Jerusalem. And, and all of, this is finally, all of God's people were unified under a king who was filled with the Holy Spirit and blessed by God. Does that sound cool? Wouldn't that be amazing if all of God's people... <laughs> were unified under King Jesus, blessed by his Holy Spirit, filled with power, filled with love for him, love for others, the desire to make disciples under him, unified. Wouldn't that be dreamy? Okay, that's, that's my dream. That's why I love this psalm so much. Because that's my, my, my dream for our church and for the whole church for the whole Christian church would be that, that someday, somehow, under the power of the, by the grace of God, under the power of the Holy Spirit, that we could come together in, in total unity under King Jesus, who's worthy to be followed and be unified under him and just radically transform the world. I'm, I'm, I know I'm a pie-in-the-sky guy, but, you know, I believe it can happen, right? Because he's coming again. That's right. And so uh, I wanted to just look at this psalm again. How pl- good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. It's like precious oil poured on the head, running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, down on the collar of his robe. It's as if the dew of Hermon, now Her- Mount Hermon is in the northeast most part of, of, of the kingdom of Israel. It's actually in Syria today. And uh, then uh, it says if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion, which then is in Jerusalem, which is, you know, Jerusalem. For, for, and so you can see the unification. They're fine. It's, it's the dew from one hundreds of miles away falling on the other they're, because they're together again. They're together again. Hey. For there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life forevermore. And so say the, the verse with the first verse with me again. I just I need I like to hear it. <laughs> How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. And like I said, this is kind of a dream for the church for me. Uh, because when we live in, in unity under King Jesus, right, uh, it, is it good? Is it pleasant? All right. Look at the other kind of adjectives that go with this, right? Think of that oil. This is a whole ram's horn of oil being poured down on Aaron the high priest, and it's just it's flowing all over him, and it's refreshing and invigorating, and it is uh, full of the Lord's blessing. There's a blessing in, in, an, in an anointing. Say that ten times fast, and it's life giving life-changing and life-giving forevermore. And that's what happens when God's people do things together according to his will, his ways, his vision, uh, by his power, and, and just amazing things happen. We need to have unity. The church needs to get, we can be a model for that. This is, this, I got to tell you, for visitors who've been here, I've been a, in ministry for 30 years, and I'm not, um, I'm, I'm not brown-nosing here, but this church, this Good Shepherd Lutheran Church, is the, the, the most loving, kind, generous, amazing, godly people. They're just wonderful. And I love them so much, right? There's, there's no church I've been at like this. And so um, I'm not saying we're not unified. But, when, but we can be unified under God's vision 
And that will amplify everything. And so what we need in order to have unity, we need three things. We have to have God's reconciling love, which we have in Jesus Christ. We have to have God's life-giving power, which we have through the Holy Spirit. It's the day of Pentecost, where the Holy Spirit came upon the church. The church was born on the day of Pentecost, essentially. And we have to have God's vision for us, which unites us with his purpose. We need his vision. So he's not going to give us his purpose without giving us what we need to live out his purpose. He's going to equip us. He's going to provide for us. As long as we can surrender to his will and his ways and his word, Lord, he'll give us everything that we need. And so the church, even though Pentecost is kind of the birth of the church, uh, you ever hear of a birth that didn't have labor? So this one did too. And Pastor Susan kind of talked about it a little last week because the church almost didn't happen. It was going to happen. You can't stop God's will from being done. But it had pain. And so here you got these uh, disciples of Jesus who he's been, you know, he's, he's only been risen for a day, you know, this is the day that he rose. They're hiding for their lives in the upper room. You got uh, Peter, who, be, who denied Jesus three times. The other guys who, who uh, abandoned Jesus completely. Judas has killed himself because he betrayed Jesus. These guys are in fear for their lives. And they're behind locked doors, and Jesus comes to them. And he loves them. He loves on them. And he forgives them and he gives them, he breathes on them and gives them the gift of his Holy Spirit. He, he gives them the authority to forgive. For those Lutherans who've ever studied the small catechism, that's what the office of the keys is, the, the authority to forgive, right? And so he gives us the, the, the power to forgive. And so there's still some friction between the disciples, but there's especially a problem between Peter and Jesus. Jesus needs to restore that relationship. And you know how Peter is. He's kind of a stubborn, you know, uh, foot-in-your-mouth kind of guy. He's very willful. And, I, you know, he, he jumps out of the boat and he, he goes to Jesus, but it's Jesus who comes to him. And Jesus in the scripture, in the gospel that we read from John today, asks him three times, do you love me? Yes, you know, I love you. You know, uh, I, I love you. Well, feed my sheep. Right? He, he's, he's restoring that relationship. And what Jesus is doing here in the gospel that we heard today is not only is he restoring the relationship, but he's giving Peter his vision and purpose. He's giving Peter his vision statement, all right? And so he says to, to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord. He said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. And he says, take care of my sheep. And he says, feed my sheep. And he says, follow me. So Peter was, what, what was Peter before all this, occupation-wise? He was a fisherman, right? He was a fisherman. What is he now? According to Jesus, he's a shepherd. That's a pretty big transition. But he needed to be the shepherd for the whole church for a while, right? And Jesus gave him his vision, but he couldn't do that without God, Jesus reconciling love. He's going to give him the power of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost, and he gives him his vision. Now you're, a, you're, not, a, you're not a fisherman anymore. You think you're a fisherman. What I say is you're a shepherd. And if Jesus says he's a shepherd, he's a shepherd, right? And we, we are what Jesus says we are, right? We are what Jesus says we are. Now, Peter's love for Jesus, when Jesus says, do you love me? The, in Greek, I've, I've preached on this before, I won't bore you with it, but the, the, the love that Jesus says is agape. Agape is a divine love. It's a powerful love that comes from God. So he says, Peter, do you agape me? Peter says, well, Lord, I, I phileo you. That's a brother, like we get Philadelphia. That's a brotherly love. It's not the same kind of love. He says, I love you, but not the same way you love, you're asking me if I love you. And that's disturbing to Peter. The third time Jesus asks it, he actually says, Peter, do you only phileo me? 
Do you, do you only love me with human love? And Peter says, you know, you know what kind of love I have for you. But so even though Peter's love is inadequate, Jesus' love is not. I want you to remember that. Even whatever we are inadequate at, Jesus is not. Whatever we are inadequate, whether it's love or forgiveness or anything, Jesus is not. And he gives that to us. And he provides that for us. And after Pentecost, let me tell you, the guy who, who didn't know anything personally about agape, by the time you read his letters for second, first and second Peter, it's all about agape. He's all about agape. He has received and, and can give the agape love that Jesus asked him about. What do we need to live in unity together? To have this vision. If we have a vision from Jesus for the church, then we have a new beginning. When Jesus gave Peter vision, he had a new beginning. Restored relationship, new identity, new beginning. What do we need to live together in unity? We need his love, we need his power, and we need his purpose. Okay? Jesus came with love, the Holy Spirit came with power. They both gave Peter the new vision, the new identity. Take care of my sheep and follow me. He does that for us too. So for those of you who are visiting, lots of visitors today, but today we're, we're revealing our new vision statement for this church. And we have been working on this since uh, April of, of 2021. And we have had uh, town halls and uh, congregational meetings and workshops. We had 40 days of prayer over this. We've had prayer teams praying about this. The board of trustees have been praying about it. We've been on our knees praying about it. We've had confirmation after confirmation after confirmation. And we want the church to be unified under Jesus and under this vision because it's good and it's pleasant and it's refreshing and it's invigorating and it's life-changing and it's life-giving and there's a blessing in all of it. Right? And so this is the vision statement that Jesus Christ has given to us for this season. For this season. And it is love God, love others, make disciples. If you take the, all, everything Jesus taught in the Gospels and you scrunch it down to six words, <laughs> it's love God, love others, make disciples. That's it. Can you, can you remember it? Well, say it with me. Love God, love others, make disciples. We scrunched it down even a little bit further. GC2 or GC squared. I call it GC squared. That is GCGC. GC. It's the great commandment times the great commission. All right? The great commandment, and I'm not flashing you or anything, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to be in uniform like from now on, basically, I mean, all these, we've got this logo. So this logo, we, we went out there, we talked to all these people who had nothing that we didn't even know them. And we had a bunch of them. And we said, tell us the one that, that catches your eye that you like the best. And this one far and away was the one that people said, oh, that catches my eye. I think it, cause it, it kind of looks like the Gucci symbol, but it, it <laughs> but, uh, but we want people to go, well, what's that? And if you look at it closely, you can, there's a uh, flag out front that has it. You'll see that there's an ichthus, a Jesus fish in it. Uh, but, but we want people to look at it and go, what's that mean? And then you can say, oh, it means love God, love others, and make disciples. Gives you something to talk about. You got it built in, okay? So anyway, in the future, we'll, we'll be working on shirts and stuff for you for that. Great commandment. Times the Great Commission is God's vision for us. Love God, love others, make disciples. This is the great commandment, just for refresher, right? Of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, Jesus answer Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. That is from Deuteronomy 6, by the way. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What's important to him is, is just as important yesterday, today, and forever, okay? Uh, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There's no commandment greater than these. First GC, great com commandment. 
This is the Great Commission. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I am with you to the very end of the age. Love God, love others, and make disciples. Simple, right? Is it simple to do? And not so much, not all the time. We need his love. We need his power. We have his vision. So he gave us his reconciling love through Jesus. He gave us his power through the Holy Spirit. Now he's given us his vision to love God, love others, and make disciples. And what we have to do as a church then is we have to consider everything that we do. All of our programs, all of our ministries, all of our services, all of the projects that we do, everything that we do, we need to go with We need to do it with the love of Jesus Christ, with the power of the Holy Spirit, and it needs to go through this vision so that we're unified, right? So that we have unity in him. It's our purpose. It's our why to love God, love others, and make disciples. So everything we do needs to have purpose in it and intention. So we got to think, is something like Vacation Bible School, love God, love others, make disciples? Yeah, it is. Amen. Praise Jesus. How about this mission trip? Absolutely it is, right? If we find something that's not, we need to go, hey, you know what? I think we can adjust this a little bit. Lord, give us wisdom on it, whether we should keep this or not, and if we're supposed to keep it, what's missing, and if what's, whatever's missing, help us to find it, right? And then we want to equip everybody. We want you to be equipped for the vision, for the mission. And so we're, we're doing some discipleship equipping. So in the month of August, starting with the first Wednesday in August, And going through August 31st, I'm offering, we're offering something called Operation Solid Lives, which is a very intense, very intensive discipleship training program. And it's just the first level out of five. And is is it hard, Pastor Susan? Uh (laughs) She went through it individually. Is it worth doing? All right. And so we want to equip you in discipleship. And, and so I want in the months ahead, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, explain that more, but I want you to pray about being part of that. And the more that can do it, the better. It's awesome. Over, have you noticed over about the last year, I've been getting people to please watch the alpha videos, come to every alpha thing that we have, watch the videos, see the content, because it's one of the best evangelism programs there is out there. And people will find why they were here, why Jesus loves them, why they should care about Jesus at all. Um, And and so we're going to keep offering that. At 9.30 during this time, if you come to the 8 o'clock or the 11 o'clock services in the chapel, we're going to keep running those alpha videos so you can have a chance to see the content. And if you can't do it at 9.30, then let me know and I'll find a way for you to see the content. But John, is it worth doing? All right. You, You see this stuff and you go, I know somebody. I know a whole bunch of people who need to hear what I just heard, who need to see what I just saw. And so in September, we're going to run Alpha as a program. It's going to have, basically it's dinner, you watch the video, you have discussion. And I'll tell you what, I've seen so many people uh, come into a a, a never-ending, life-giving relationship with Jesus Christ through Alpha. You're you're, going to be glad to be part of it. Okay, so those are things that we're doing. And over this next month in June, we are going to continue to to talk about this. Today, we introduce it. Next week, we're going to talk about love God. The following week is love others. The last week of uh, Sunday of June is, is make disciples. We're going to give you examples. We're going to talk about this, flesh it out more, because we want you to be unified in Jesus' name for the vision and the purpose and the plans that he has for us. God has shown us directly to, and is equipping us for this. And this is, the, this, is my, this is the dream. Can we say this together again? Psalm 133, 1. How pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. It is blessing and life-giving. We have his love. We have his power. We have his purpose now. So come and be refreshed and equipped and empowered to him to love God, to love others, and make disciples. Let's say it one more time. Our vision statement, our purpose is to love God, love others, and make disciples.
All right, GC squared, right? So let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for the word. Thank you for the confirmation. Thank you for your purpose, your plan, your power, your love, your, your reconciling power over us, Lord God. Lord, help us to be your hands and feet in this world. And make this church a, a bride of Christ without blemish. Lord Jesus, just, just lift us up in your name. Fill us with your Holy Spirit and your power and just help us to have the joy, the joy of doing things your way. In Jesus' name. Amen.